The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the July 19th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader Zen Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us not to us. That's right. When you and I can find that, uh, uh, make that two by four shift means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, mostly bulls, and buyers and sellers, what they're communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't dial in but you've got a question, no problem. We've got you covered. Send an email. Send it off early. Send it to steve at tfn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger Den, well, then any and every ping we all do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, you got a uh, rally going on, a uh, slightly mixed bag. The mix coming from the semis that are down nine points, so that's a quarter of a percent. The Dow is up 151, S&P's up 14, NASDAQ 142, Russell's up 7, Tranny's up 44. You've got gold trading down 3 bucks at 1977. Silver is up uh, 4 pennies trading at 2530. Lights we crude is trading out at 7621. That's a move of 55 pennies or flat in natural gas and a 30 year treasury. Print out 12704, that's up 11 ticks. Leading the charge dollar wise, the upside are Genix SE up 23 bucks, 4.5%, Elephant's Health up 22 bucks. That's a big move, 5%. Mercado Libre, $16. Thermo Fisher, 15 And Carvana, up 13 That's a 33% move there. The Shakers, Asmil Holdings, trading down $29, nearly 4%. Align Technology, $17, nearly 5%. Lamb Research, nearly 2%, or 12 bucks. Mm -hmm. KLA Corp, down $10, 2%. And Omnicrom, Omnicom Group is down over 10 bucks. That's an over a 10% move to the downside. But let's begin by taking a look at the, uh, let's take a look at market breadth. Let's go to the short term time frame. Market breadth for the uh, NASDAQ and for the S&P 500. Here's the S&P. We are bearish at this moment. I Meaning there's only 82 instruments trading above 30 minute profile and 210 below the bottom of a 30 minute profile. So for the 30 minute time frame for the S&P, for the S minute, it is bearish. We've got a similar outcome for the uh, nasdaq 100 the nq you've got 20 above and 32 below we haven't had we haven't seen that for uh, days out here so for the 30 minute time frame they're bearish that means we should look at 30 minute time frame charts uh, which we will in fact let me get that fired up here and then we'll pull over the uh 30 minute equity futures we'll pull over the larger time frame so now we're going to take a look at 60 minute 240 four-hour time frame, as well as daily and weekly. Well, when you take a look at the S&P 500, we're bullish across the board there, and very well bullish. I mean, on a 60-minute basis, 285 above, 88 below. So we want to find where's the support level on that 30-minute time frame chart. The NASDAQ 100, the exact same thing, too. Bullish across the board here. 60-minute, you've got 51 above, 21 below. So very bullish with regard to the other four time frames. So now let's go see what's going on on the 30-minute basis. Um, let's switch over to that panel. Looks like I've got to adjust the charts. Things have gone off the rails here. Don't know why, but they have. So let's get these white background charts up. Let's uh, actually get them somewhat centered out here and see what kind of patterns we've got. Okay. So with regard to the ES Mini, ES Mini, 
you know, it has roads momentum indicator signal, hasn't generated the bullish reversal candle, and price has pulled back the test support. And support now is 45.92. 45.92 is the bottom of that profile. So watch 45.92. If price closes below that, the signal would be a move back to 45.45. We don't have that. And the NQ, thought that that centered it, did not. Now we've got it. The NQ has a TD9 count top that still has not been taken out. It was attempted uh, during that last half hour session, but it still is held. In order for that to get negated, it must see a close above 1602975. It has also formed a Rhodes Mintum indicator top out here. So you got two tops. Does that make it better than one? No. Does it make it better than three? Or worse than three? No, it just makes it a top. And what price is done? Whenever you get a top, this is the beauty of really studying the intraday charts out here. Not not so much for the signals, although they're helpful. But price is simply pulling back the test support. So we know we have negative market breadth on the top two, the ES and the NQ, for their 30-minute time frame. That has pushed price back to support, which is held. The support level for the NQ to be watching is 15,977. If you had two consecutive closes below that, that could open up the door to 15,772. So for the NQ, you know the top level that price needs to close above to tell you further rally. And you know the bottom level, uh, or the support area, I really should say, you know, the resistance and support levels out there, where if price closes above or below either of those, it's going to tell you what its intentions are. Right now, it's just intentions are a sideways move to frustrate you. If we take a look at the Dow Equity Future contract, this has formed a Rose Mint indicator top. Shoot, it's only uh, five, it's testing the first level of support, which is the green oscillator and change line. Its levels of support are down between 35,121 and 35,147. Um, but it still is bull somewhat bullish it's neutral i would say because it's trading above that green oscillator change line no topping pattern inside the russell that's been strong like a uh, bull for the last couple of uh, days out here last several days it's got to confirm a to b equals cd to the upside that is still trying to complete off inside the russell 2000 equity future contract that a to b equals cd pattern would take us up to 2030 so 2030 is the target to the upside to the downside should the ES and NQ decide to move uh, lower, they, the Dow as well. Then the Russell 2000, its area of support to be watched would be 1984.10. So what we know here, negative market breadth right now in a 30-minute for the ES and the NQ. Price has pulled back and tested support. Support is held. And now if the resistance levels get taken out, those are the highs of the day. That says a further rally should ensue. So hope that helps you out with regard to what's going on in the equity markets. We do have a couple of questions that have come in. So let's get to those. The first one was from David H. And David was writing. Let me actually close these charts out, get rid of some resources out here. David wants to take a look at Elevance Health, ELV. We talked about that earlier. It's one of the stocks that is trading to the upside of the top five stocks that I took a look at. But let's go take a look at where this is headed to and what it's doing. ELV is the uh, ticker symbol. Uh, and ELV is trading out right now at 468.68. So big move out there today, big gap to the upside with price taking out its bearish structured daily profile. The top of that profile out there was 451.77. Let me actually read the question. That would be helpful. It says, hey, Steve, give me your ultra short term perspective on elements. I don't know if I can give you ultra short term, but I'll do what I can. You've got the 450 calls, they expire on Friday. Okay. Uh, they had earnings this morning, and uh, it's a beat. Do you think it will take out the top of the 482 level? 482, that's your swing point. Steve Rhodes with TFNet. Now we know what to look for, and that's what we'll look for when we get back from this break. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com 
TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at Elevin's Health. ELV is the ticker symbol. Had a night gap to the upside today. And the question is, will price from David H., will price pierce this candle here? Will close above and take out 482.09? That's the high from June 5th. In other words, 1.5 million shares of traded hands that day. You're up already with 1 million shares. So you're trading in that swing point with volume. Even if price closes below the low of that at 471.08, and we're below that right now, price will at least test 471.08 or should test 471.08. But your question is, will price take out 482? And my answer right now would be no. And the reason it would be no is you've got the volume as price tried to push up, couldn't take that off. What it's running into out here that we can take a look at, David, is 480.45. And that is the top of that weekly profile. So at this stage here, do you have volume? Absolutely, you've got volume. Uh, to take it out. Do you have a, a buy pattern? You do have a buy the D point pattern out there. Um, you're looking at this really more from a short term perspective. I looked at the short term time frame charts, five minute, 10 minute, 30 minute, and I didn't see anything there uh, to suggest that you jettison this position, but really it's going to be that weekly profile that you're taking a look at. So can it take it out? Sure, it can. And does it have the volume behind it? It does, but it hasn't. So those sellers that are sitting right out there at 480, 45, um, uh, those are those look like pretty good sellers out there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to Elevance uh, Health. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in, David, in Panama City. And I look forward to your next uh, request out there. Our next request, though, goes to uh, G. Bolt here. And that is a question about the euro and really the U.S. dollars. question is, will the U.S. dollar run higher? So if we take a look at the euro, which represents 57.6 percent, I believe, of the U.S. dollar index, what we can see here is we can see an A to B equals CD pattern. What we we don't see is the uh, uh, bearish reversal candle. So we don't have a sell the D point pattern out here. We do have a TD9 count potential, but in order for that to take place, we would see, need to see a close in the euro today above 1.1223. That's what the euro needs to close above. If it doesn't close above it, the current TD9 count pattern will go away. We won't have a topping signal 
and we don't have uh, and uh, but price could pull back to test support still one dollar and eleven one point one one three at the moment that's that green oscillator and change line so if the dollar is going to go higher which was really your question we need to see the euro definitively decide that it's going to go lower and the only way we'd get a definitive signal on that is to get a, a bearish reversal candle to sell the uh, D point out there pattern or get a, uh, we need a bit of more rally today uh, for gold to close above that close of bar number five in order to generate a TD nine count top. On a weekly basis here, there's nothing bearish about the Euro when we take a look at its charts. When we take a look at the monthly time frame, we would say the same thing. We're above prior month's highs. The monthly chart could be signaling to an I that there's an A to B equal CD to the upside that would take us up towards the 1.19 level. I can tell you and assure you that if that unfolds, that the U.S. dollar index is going to head lower, not higher. So with regard to the uh, U.S. dollar, you've got the euro, you've got the yen, which is about 14 percent. We can throw that up here on our screen, too, and see what that's signaling to us. But right now, it looks like we might get a pullback in the euro which would put a little strength in the US dollar but we're not seeing we're not seeing the topping pattern that uh, uh, to, uh, to to really suggest the US dollar would take off but we do have the Japanese yen so we've got the uh, USD JPY let's get that up on our screen here let's just take a quick peek and see what it is doing because I believe that it does have a topping pattern out there again only a 13.6 percent if I've got my uh, figures correct waiting inside the U.S. dollar index. So here, what we're going to see is a TD9 count bottom. And that TD9 count bottom suggests that price should run up to 141 and change. 141 and change is the oscillator and change line. If price can close above that, so when this chart, when the U.S., when the Japanese yen here is moving higher, it's weakening against the U.S. dollar index. So we do have a situation right now where it looks like the euro will pull back and test its oscillator and change. So it looks like the yen will move higher to test its oscillator and change line. And that should provide you globe, uh, G bolt out there. That should provide the U.S. dollar index with moving higher, maybe into the top of that uh, daily profile that we looked at here. But is this one that's suggesting that we're going to take off to the top side? Well, in the case of the yen, I can't answer that question. It's got a valid bottom here. And we really won't know until we see that uh, 148, 141 and change level uh, tackled out there. So what else can I show you with regard to the U.S. dollar index? Let's see here. We can do one more thing. We can switch over to our black background charts, take a look and see what's on those charts out here. And here, with regard to these charts, you see the uh, buy the D point pattern that uh, is likely to form today. But you've got resistance here at the 100.31 level. So G bolt. The answer to your question partly was due to, or as, as you know, take a look at analysis of the euro, the yen. We didn't do the Great British Pound. If you just do those three currency pairs, you're at 82% of the uh, weighting inside of the U.S. dollar index. But what we also know is if the U.S. dollar index is going to move higher, you know that it needs to close above 100.31 out there. If I look at the weekly time frame chart, weekly time frame chart has got a larger A to B equals CD to the downside that suggests it wants to get down to the 91.38 level. We're below profile on a monthly time frame. And uh, the uh, yearly chart, well, I probably should put it to a quarterly, but the yearly chart, uh, you know, is is bullish out there. So we got mixed signals out here. So what I would to answer your question, the U.S. dollar index is going to move higher. You're going to need to see a close at least above 100.31. So that was a long route to get there, but it was a route nonetheless. So I do hope that that helps you out. Let's go take a look at the next question that came in. This one is from Dan inside the Tiger's Den. And Dan wants to take a look at uh, Nike. He's net short Nike. You can see that Nike yesterday ran right into resistance. In fact, the yesterday's signal, Dan, is that the move in Nike was just a counter trend move. I know you're looking to add to your short position. You got that signal yesterday. And that signal is price was trading below the bottom of a bullish structured profile. As long as you trade below the bottom of a bullish structured profile for more than two bars out there, or for two bars, at a minimum of two bars, then if there's a move, in this case here, we're looking at a bullish structured profile, there's a move higher. You don't see the Nike chart? Oh, you see the dollar chart. Sorry about that. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Hold on. Stevie, that Stevie is asleep at the switch out there. And I hate to have to repeat myself because I know it just bores this living, you know, what out of you. But it, it is what it is. So now we've got the Nike chart up here. Okay, so now let's start back over. Bull structured profile. We're looking at the daily time frame. Price below for more than for two consecutive sessions, at least two consecutive sessions. 
counter trend moves, my experience, counter trend moves will find resistance, really not at the bottom, although it can, but really at that center line. And that's what took place yesterday, and that's at 110.09. Now, Dan, I would not be net short if uh, price closed above 110.09, because that would be signaling to you and I that Nike wants to make a move to 114.27, and that's the place where you could then get short. But you got the signal yesterday. Today, you are still below the bottom of that profile. But here's the catch. What we don't know, what we do know, is that uh, two days ago, price moved lower and found support at that oscillator and change line. So that's kind of your risk reward kind of calculations out here. And that's at the 10707, uh, 107.10 level as we speak right now. So it's trading. We know we got a level of support at 107.10. If you're comfortable that that's going to be taken out, then now would be the time to add to that uh, short position. However, let's take a quick peek here at a 30 minute time frame chart. Let's give Dan one more piece of information. Dan, that piece of information is this. You close below 108.51. The bottom of that 30 minute profile, you're likely down to 107.31. I hope that helps you out with the information you're looking for. If not, let me know and we'll get back to it. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. FNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Folks, still a mixed bag. The semi's down seven points, about two tenths percent. We're looking at the charts here for Bank of America. 
BAC is the ticker symbol. This is for uh, Duncan Steve inside the Tiger's Den. Uh, Duncan, uh, you've got the confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. We can see that price is along the C to D leg. It's on the inside. It's on the left side. It's on the strong side. That's an indication that it wants to do more than a one-to-one. -one. It's already done more than a one-to-one. -one. So what you'd be looking at here is if uh, you were to get a bearish reversal candle, that would then generate a Gartley sell pattern. So short of that, price should continue to move higher. There's no topping pattern. What it wants to do is it wants to trade towards 34.56. That's on a daily time frame. That's a daily TD9 count breakdown area. But I'd be more looking out for a bearish reversal candle uh, than focused on 34.56. And the reason is because 31.66 is going to be the real next resistance level. That's on the weekly time frame chart. We don't know if this is just a consolidation with inside the weekly profile level. That's be between 27.39 and 31.66. Uh, 31.71 is also a resistance area. That's the bottom of its monthly profile. So it looks beautiful, but it's about to do battles. And those battles, again, are between 31.66 and 31.71. You get above that, then you're off to the races, and those races should take you to 33. And I would say be, then would be between the 33 and the 34.56 level that you would be looking at. That's what I see when I take a look at Bank of America. This is going to be about the third day, third consecutive move higher a day out there. So we should, it should be getting ready for a retracement. Um, out here. Um, maybe it waits until it gets up to that 3166. So Duncan, I know you're looking from a sh you wanted a short term perspective. The shortest term perspective right now that I give you will be a 30 minute chart out here. And what we don't see here is any kind of a topping signal. Prices above a green asset or change line above profile. There's no reason that Bank of America should not continue to move higher. So I would say the short term really would then be watch resistance at that uh, 3166 ish type area out there. So I hope that helps you out. And thank you you for taking time to ask for a request. ELO wanted to take a look at corn. So let's go to Stevie's corny charts out here. And we go take a look at those corn charts. We're going to ignore the July contract out here. This is a set of charts that I had set up in the case anybody wanted to trade the ETF corn, which usually contains two or three futures contracts. So I don't know what the three contracts are, but right now probably corn contains September and December. I don't know what the weightings are, but you'd have to really look that up. But with regard to corn and what ELO is looking for, uh, right now, corn looks like you're on the September contract. That's the active contract. That looks like that wants to target 613. The December contract, 616.75. Those are both TD9 count breakdown resistance levels. With regard to uh, bottom patterns out here, I don't have it. Does it matter? Why? Because price is above profiles, because we're trading above prior day's highs. We haven't taken, we haven't gotten close to the yesterday's low or anything. So corn looks like it wants to continue to rally. Now, in the 30-minute time frame charts out here, for both of these time frames, price did form Rhodes Mintum indicator tops. But what price also did was it got back to its breakout level at 535.50 for the uh, September contract, 541.75 for December. Those areas, yes, there was a slight close below it, but that was only on the first bar. The second bar said, oops, sorry. Went a little bit beyond where I was supposed to go, and that level has held. Now, what you're looking at on a short term time frame, 30 minutes that is, price running into profile resistance up at 548.75 and 555, September and December, respectively. So, what you're looking for is if price can take out today's high. First, it's got to take out those profile levels. Today's high for September is up at the 557.50 level. Today's high for December is up at the 557.50 level. If those highs are taken out, that's then going to tell you that the rally is ready to uh, continue and make its way up towards those daily TD9 count breakdown levels. What happens if it doesn't close above it today? Well, then you're kind of consolidating between the highs and between these breakout levels that we see on the 30-minute time frame. So ELO. Uh, got a, what a great band that is, right? Um, I hope that that helps you out. If not, let me know what additional information I can provide to you. Let me close out these charts here because I know that is hogging some of Stevie's resources. We'll go to our next question, which comes from Mr. Bill. Now, Mr. Bill wants to take a look at DBA. So we'll get over to those charts, but he also wanted to look at the seasonal patterns. So with regard to the seasonal pattern, where do I have DBA? Is that it? Nope, that was Bank of America. Let's go to DBA. So here is DBA. What Mr. Bill also wanted to look at was the seasonal pattern. So we take a look at, ah, oh, shoot. Okay, I'm going to do this on a different uh, screen here. Sometimes it weirds out. Don't know why that is. But we're, so I'm going to switch screens here. We're going to take, take a look at the seasonal. Now we'll take a look at the actual charts, which are showing on my screen right now. 
Okay, here's the seasonal pattern. Now we have 16 years worth of data. This is the Invesco Agriculture Fund. So it contains a lot of different agricultural ETFs. Corn is very likely inside of that, but you'd want to find out which future contract is inside there. But what this is telling us is from a seasonal perspective, for those instruments that are in there, we're in the unfavorable seasonal time period. That time period typically runs from about the uh, early part of June, mid-June, all the way down into the October timeframe. And then we get a bit of a rally, rally into uh, early part of November, a pull back into uh, early part of December, then a move higher. But right now, as far as DBA, let's go take a look at this charts. It's kind of ignoring the seasonal pattern. So maybe you don't pay as much attention to the seasonal out there, but you did want that information, and now you've got it. Now let's go take a look at DBA's charts. But to really analyze DBA, you must go take a look at what those futures contracts, which what future contracts it holds, what the percentage weighting are and then analyze those charts but with regard to DBA here's what we can see we can see that prices above the top of its daily and weekly profile prices above its green oscillator and change line for the daily and weekly time frame those are all suggesting a further move higher to its most recent highs out here well that recent high took place on June 21st volume wise up there 607,000 shares so far today 351,000 shares that sounds to me like it's pushing into that swing point with volume and therefore a close today above 2194 suggests at least a test of 21 2213 22.13, a price close above that on a weekly basis, that would be closing above its dark cloud cover candle, which confirmed a sell the D point pattern. So again, a close above 22.13 would be very bullish for the DBA. And then what would that signal to us? That would then signal a move up to 23.01. And 23.01 is the top of the monthly profile. So we go daily, then we go to the weekly, and then we go to the monthly, and that gives us a good overall analysis of DBA. The caution here is that DBA is taking its orders not from these tools, it's taking its orders from each of those individual commodity charts that represent what is contained inside it right now today, and I do not know what that answer is. With regard to a 30-minute time frame chart out here for DBA, there's nothing bearish here, uh, although there was a wave seven top, but that was taken out uh, during this session here because we saw a higher high. So I don't see anything negative on the 30-minute time frame chart, and it does look like DBA wants to continue to move higher. So, Mr. Bill, thanks for being my wingman, always letting me know when I am uh, talking about a chart that I'm not showing up on my screen, and that is a beautiful thing. John C. writes in, and he wants to take a look at Tesla. I think I've got the Tesla charts on this screen. I do. So now we've got our multi set of time frame charts out here, John C. And with regard to Tesla, let's take a look at this when we get back from this breakout here. But what you'll see today, folks, Tesla, on a weekly basis, look at the weekly chart. What bar are we in? The bar following bar number nine on a weekly basis that says we could see a top. What do you see on the daily time frame? You see a rose momentum indicator signal. What does Tesla need to do to tell us that it has topped out? That's the question. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. You've got uh, still a mixed bag. It's the semis uh, that are negative uh, by about six points, so a little less than two-tenths of a percent to the uh, downside. Dow's up 158, S&P 17, NASDAQ 159. We're taking a look at the charts here for Tesla. What do we know about Tesla? First, monthly basis forms that nice buy the D-point pattern on a monthly time frame. It does that in January of 2023. On a weekly basis, it did the exact same thing. It was on January 6th, specifically, or the week of January 6th. It was a bullish hammer candle that formed. So you got a monthly bullish hammer candle, weekly bullish hammer candle, both confirming by the D-point pattern. So weekly now is in the bar following bar number nine as price approaches 313.80. 313.80 is the TD9 count breakdown level for the weekly time frame. What should happen is we should get a top. I believe Tesla's out with earnings today after the bell, today or tomorrow, something like that. We should see a short-term top form this week. Now, on the daily time frame, we can see that price is moving higher to with less relative energy. That is not a top. The top would be a bearish reversal candle. Really, in this case here, we need to see both a bearish reversal candle and a close below its oscillator and change line, which is currently printed 290-290. Now, we're not likely to get that uh, today. It doesn't look like we're going to get that going to today's close. And if they are coming out with earnings after the bell, hard to, you know, it may sell off, but you don't know until tomorrow because that's not going to be reflected in my charts out here. If I look at the intraday charts, the 195-minute time frame chart is trying to negate a TD9 count top. The 130-minute chart uh, is trying to form a TD9 count uh, top. This current bar here is going to close at, um, it's, it's, gonna, it's closing like right now. And uh, so this could form a TD9 count top at day's end. Uh, the 65-minute chart needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm a, a, a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. The 30 um, has negated a TD9 count top. So we don't have any consistency here, John C., with regard to what is being communicated to us by the intraday charts for Tesla. So I'll just make it real simple. Tesla, what is it going to do after earnings? No idea. 313.80 is the next resistance level up there. That's the weekly TD9 count breakdown area. We know that the weekly says... Prepare for a potential top. That'll get confirmed on the daily time frame. And not until then, I guess, would Tesla really be some kind of a, a short. So, John C., I hope that helped you out, provided you with the information you were looking for for TSLA. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. McGuppy, nice to hear from you. McGuppy wants to take a look at AMD. So let's get those charts here fired up. AMD, this will take just a moment. I've got to get back to the uh, spot. 
where we're at. Uh, AMD should be right here. So AMD trading out right now at about 117.60 or so. Uh, why do I have it at 118.17? Because I've got a little bit of a delayed out here. So what you're watching is this 117.61, which is basically where it's trading right now. But Guppy, what this is doing is testing one level of support. That's a green oscillator and change line. So you've got resistance in essence. This has a sell the D point pattern. Or it looks like it does. So bottom. No, I won't say it didn't bottom with a TD9 count pattern. But here is what looks like. I take it back. It did bottom with a TD9 count bottom. But here's your A to B point. Let's just move that over to the C point right there. And you can see we got a bearish shooting star back on July 14th. So this has a sell pattern. Sell patterns tell us what? That price should move back to support. Well, shoot, based on that candle close on July 14th, price should have tested support. Well, it did. It was the top of the profile. The very next day, price got down and tested that 114.59. Its work to the downside is basically done at the moment. It's tested two levels of support they've held. It's tested another level today. Again, that's that uh, green oscillator and change line. But it closed below 117 and change. Right now, it's printing at 59. Maybe just call it 50. Maybe call it 59. That's the top of the profile. Just make it easy. If you get a close below 114.59, you're back inside the profile. And price likely makes a move to 110.83, 108.96. Weekly chart looks uh, well the weekly chart has a sell the d point pattern as well you can see that bearish dark cloud cover that formed out here the week of june 16th what does price do pushes back and test support so what you know and i know john c is that support is held each time right now on these charts that we're looking at where we've got topping patterns out here we also know the resistance is held when we get to the monthly chart and resistance is up at 125.67 125.67 is its td9 count breakdown area also the top of its profile but i'd really be focused and that's at 12009 i'd really be focused more on the 125.67 to 12585 area that's your real area of resistance other than the daily bearish shooting star level we took a look at so how would you summarize amd i'd summarize it like this you got lots of td9 we got lots of topping patterns out here even on the 30 minute chart which i haven't shown you but i'm going to now that's got a td9 count top but what price all price has done is pull back and test support which is held so amd no matter what time frame we look at 30 daily weekly uh, price is pulled back to support levels after forming uh, topping patterns, and they have held. And that says to me and you that AMD is pretty darn strong out here. So only close and buy support, only closes below support or belay, whichever you prefer, would suggest that there's some kind of weakness in AMD. I don't see it, even though it's got tops. So we've got to go with the overall neutral signal as we speak right now. I do hope that helps you out, McGuppy. If not, let me know, and I'll get you the information you're looking for. Last request that I see so far whether it's in the den or via emails from Fletch. Fletch, nice to hear from you as well. And Fletch wants to take a look at Hood, H-O-O-D. I believe that is the ETF for, is Hood the ETF for Wood? Uh, no, it's not. It's Robin Hood. Robin Hood right now trading out at about $13 and change out here. It looks pretty strong. It uh, From a topping pattern, what do we have out here? We got not a zilch. You got a gigantic A to B equals CD that's just in a uh, hyperbolic move to the upside out here with no real bearish reversal candles forming after that uh, June 2nd uh, B point out here. So price continued to head higher with regard to uh, the daily time frame. I don't know if there's anything out here on the daily that's worth you and I looking at pattern wise even. Uh, instead, let's let's do this here. Let's, let's look at the weekly time frame chart. And on a weekly time frame chart, you are on bar number eight. And that tells us that we could or should get a intermediate term top between this week and two weeks out. Well, shoot, how do we know, Stevie? Well, that signal is going to come from the daily time frame. So it says, well, we got to go back to the daily, maybe draw an A to B equals CD pattern and so forth. The monthly chart is not providing you or I with any help out here so let's go ahead let's switch that charts let's switch pay, uh, charting systems let's see if we can figure out the a to b equals cd patterns out here on the daily time frame or anything else that might help us all right so on the daily time frame there would really be two a to b equals cd patterns that we would draw in we're going to draw them both in the first one takes us all the way back to the lows from back in june of 2022 takes us up to highs in or on 
November 3rd of 2022, and our C point is a retracement all the way down in December 28th, 2022. The one-to-one -one A to B equals CD, and it's hard to call this an A to B equals CD because the retracement is 87%, but I'll leave it in here anyways, would be 1352. Let's draw the second A to B equals CD pattern. The second pattern, the C point of that A to B equals CD becomes the A point. Now the B point is going to be the high for the trading session of February 2nd, 2023. The C point is the low that came in after that, and that's May 4th. You can see we are now at the 1 to 1.272 A to B equals CD. Stevie, can you draw in a third A to B equals CD pattern? Sure. Happy to do that. Here's the third one. We started at that C point of the last one that we looked at. That's the A point. B point out here. I would put that right up here at the trading session of the high. On June 16th, a couple day pullback. And there's your third one. That's a one to two A to B equals CD. What you're watching for in Hood is a bearish reversal candle to confirm a sell the D point pattern. Hope you're right. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So it does look like Robin Hood. Uh, we took a look at it. We took a look at that uh, bar number eight on the weekly time frame. It says we should see a top between this week and the next couple of weeks. How are we going to know if we're going to see that? We took a look at the A to B equals CD patterns inside of the daily time frame. The first bearish reversal candle will generate a sell the D point pattern, and that may be the signal. Now, that signal might only take us back to support, which would be the green oscillator and change line, right? We've taken a look at that and how that works uh, today. All right, let's go on to our next request. The next request coming from Sat P wants to take a look 
We've got an entry point for 3M. MMM is a ticker symbol, which today is testing resistance. We've seen this uh, rodeo before. Prices tested the 103.50 level several different times. 103.50 is its TD9 count breakdown area. Where would be a buy point on this? Well, with inside the profile that it's trading in, you'd have to say 101.01. .01. That would be its green oscillator and change line. Uh, is there anything else that I see out here for 3M? If I look at a 30-minute time frame chart, by the way, profile support would be 100.21. So your buy area would be between 100.21 and 101.01 .01 out there. And on a 30-minute time frame, nothing here that's helping us. So right now, Seth, that's what we've got to go with. I hope that that helps you out. Uh, Bruce writes in, and Bruce says, uh, Steve, do you see the SPY pulling back in the next few weeks out there? Well, to answer that question, we would go take a look at these charts. These are those. Nope, not those charts. Let's try these charts. No, not that set. Let's try it one more time. There you go. The third time is the charm. The answer to that question is going to be revealed to you next week, Bruce. Why? Because this is the completion of a weekly TD9 count topping process. This is the bar following bar number nine. Much like we took a look at inside of Robinhood, well, in the ES Mini here, its daily time frame is showing a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal. That says... That if we get a bearish reversal candle, that will confirm a topping pattern. The weekly will have a TD9 count top, and that would then suggest we pull back. Now, pull back to where? I don't have the spy charts up here right now. I'm just taking a look at the ES Mini because this is where we see the patterns out here. The first price pullback in the ES Mini would be towards the 4561 level. 4423 would be another one, but we don't have that signal just yet. Are we anticipated? We are. But if we close above whatever this week's high is next week, that is then off the table. Folks, stay tuned for great programming. I'll be back with you on terrific Thursday. Please have a wonderful Wednesday. Be safe out there. We'll see you again. Take care.